The No campaign has raised a lot of questions about the Uluru Statement. Jacinta Price has asked about whether it's actually one pages or really 26 pages. And on Tuesday, Warren Mundine called it a symbolic declaration of war. He also said that the Yes campaign is built on a pack of lies. What is your response to that? I know Warren. He's a, you know, he's a good guy. And I feel very disappointed that he has um, framed what is a um, very unifying ask on our country from First Nations people. To to frame it as a declaration of war is so many miles from the intention of that document and the spirit in which it was created. Um, I mean, I was present when people unanimously accepted the statement, apart from, as we know, the seven people who walked out. It was a moment of great unity, of great joy. I've been all around the country with the statement. I've read it to people. And the overwhelming uh, message that people respond to the statement is with hope, hope Mm. for a better country, hope for a better future for Indigenous people, and hope that we finally recognise the First Nations, you know, Um, foundations of this country. It is a hopeful document that tries to bring the nation together. And I think the no case are doing their best, can I say, to create division and misinformation around what that statement actually is. And they will be remembered in history for what they are doing now. You know, we will look back on this moment, depending on whether it gets up or not. And, you know, we know that it's in the balance. History will remember their behaviour uh, in relation to this really historic opportunity for unity. And, you know, my dad always used to say, we forgive but we never forget and this will not be forgotten by Indigenous people, what's gone on in these last few weeks of this campaign, um, particularly in relation to um, these words about the Uluru Statement, which is really a gift to the nation of, of peacefulness and unity, not division. Do you think that your campaign and and the government were prepared for this type of misinformation? This is the first referendum in the social media age. Were you ready? To be honest, possibly not. I think that the outright lies that have been um, said, and I'm not naming any particular individuals here, but I was at a rally three days ago on Saturday and a woman, Indigenous woman, is part of the No uh, group, got up and said that the voice was going to take over government, Mm. that it was a communist plot, that we were all communists, and that people should go home and check the deeds for their property because the voice would come for their homes and all property rights would be uh, assumed by the voice. And that was said at a rally of four or 500 people and it was an absolute disgraceful set of lies. And so this is the company that the No campaign are in. Um, There's a big crossover with conspiracy theorists, um, anti-vaxxers that has infiltrated the No movement. We've seen white supremacists associated with this movement. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a very difficult time for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to have to endure this sort of commentary. I've been door knocking. I've been, you know, subject to abuse and just had to listen to a whole lot of racist stereotypes about my people. It's not easy, but we're used to it, aren't we? We've had to put up with it for so long, for so long, and here we're trying to bring this positive moment to Australia of unity. And I think we can get there if Australians actually read the provision, read the amendment, and they will see in the amendment that it simply is suggesting that we should agree to give an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to give advice to Parliament and the executive. And that is it. That is all it is saying. It's Mm -hmm. not saying anything about treaty. It's not saying anything about property rights. It's not saying anything about the Communist Party. It's just an advisory committee. Seriously, it's so modest. It's so modest, but it's being projected as a threat to our democracy that's going to undermine the Parliament. So anyway... What can you say? Uh, it's very difficult with, you know, social media and powerful media forces that are um, 
you know, monopolised in the hands of a few, it makes the job of um, sharing factual information very difficult. 